So the exercise, you can see it here on the slide. It was very simple. So what I've decided to do here, I've decided to stay on the surface because we all know that if you don't, so I, I, I'm telling you right now that the most important in human design is strategy and authority. If we're talking about strategy, each strategy is connected to your type and your authority. It's about your inner authority, how to make correct decision in your life. So what I did, I just put he, myself here, mom and my son here. And I just put that strategy, my, my strategy, because I'm a manifesting generator. So my, my strategy is to respond. And in my case, responding is really fast because I have this, yes, manifesting part that, and because I have the channel um, of charisma, so um, 30, 34, 20. So when I responding to, some, to something, I'm already in it, you know, just like, shoo. and uh, my authority is sacral. So, and again, it's like now, so when I respond, because my 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 strategy and authority connected, so uh, when I respond to something, I have to jump or hop on like right now, right now. So this is the right moment for me to do it right now. So what I did, I started uh, my own experiment, like you know, just like uh, from the beginning, as I did when I. Uh, actually got my first basic reading in 2015 so I started experimenting with my responding with my responding and it was like it was really difficult for me you know just to respond for example if if we um I don't know if we for example had an appointment with my son with with a doctor and he told me that you have to we have to take more tests and I like no <laughs> You can imagine it's really difficult, you know, even considering that you think that the doctor knows better for you. But I feel that this is not the right moment here. The other time when um, we ended up at the emergency because I just I, I found something in his eyes. He he had different pupil size. So I was concerned that if it's something like like, I don't know, life-threatening or not. And we ended up at the hospital and th they were trying to take his blood test. But I had this feeling, no, like, you know, just like, no. But I, like, again, I, I, I did not trust myself, like, you know, for 100%. So I was, okay, okay. And and you know what happened? Um three nurses they tried to take blood test from him and they failed and you can imagine he was um uh it's happened so he was about like four or five months old like tiny little like tiny little boy and three nurses are failed and like I don't know. I like I was so scared. And of course, I wanted to know what is going on, but I felt that it was not an emergency. It was not like something life threatening to him, you know. But again, it's like this fear, and especially again when we have to know we just need to, to make a lot of tests on him. And when they tried for the first time, uh, when they tried for the third, for the fourth time, I allowed to do that. You won't believe they they successfully uh, uh, um, took the blood from him, but like 30 minutes later, they told me because they were doing it for so long that the blood is clotted. So the, the, the results failed and they need to do it again. And at that moment, I realized so probably that is the moment finally to follow my gut and to say no. Because my like my just my guts like were screaming no no stop 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 you see so I said no they like because we're here in Australia and if you said no of course they're not going to do anything with your child because they they do not have this parent con co consent so and 
the same day I've decided, even I was uh, like, I felt guilty and I was really scared, but I've decided that I have st to stop doing this. So I've asked to discharge us from the hospital because uh, I asked them uh, if they think that he is like stable to go home and that they do not see any life threatening um like life threat anything life threatening and they told me no he's okay we just we just do not know why he has like a different pupil size but uh it's nothing like it's nothing dangerous so of course it's better for you to stay here so we can do more tests and i and i said no we we'll just we we'll just go home today please can we do it as soon as possible and I think that that was like you know just I was so proud of myself you won't believe I was um at that moment I felt um like before making this decision I was so scared but when I did this decision I was you know I was so proud I was so satisfied with that and when we when we went home and he was so happy at home we were so happy and everything was okay and you won't believe but a few months later the doctor the they, they checked his eyes you know just like a routine check and they told me oh look it's it's not a problem okay we have this anomaly called anzikaria so it's like some people ha they, they have it and it's like it's not connected to anything like anything else anything health issues so it's okay some people have it and it's this not normal but uh there is nothing life-threatening in this in this um in this disease so we, we just we just need to keep an eye on it and that's all and i was like okay so I just when I was analyzing my decision at that time that like I had to tell from the beginning no stop doing all those tests to my son because my body knew that there is nothing there is nothing life threatening to him you see so this is what I called being an experiment and um yeah so um that's how my um real you know just honest real experiment with my special needs child started i can tell you that for like for the last because he's five year, years old already for the last five years uh, like we had a lot of such a story when i was so scared to tell no or to tell yes but again it's it's my way of uh you know of finding and trusting my god and um i'm still doing that it's like i can tell you that i'm still uh sometimes i'm scared and it's really difficult to make decision to respond you know in a correct way but it was very inspiring inspiring for myself so um yes what i'm telling you here <laughs> um Yes, and my son. So my son, he's a pure generator. Yes, and um, he's pure generator. And um, considering that he that that he, that he's just a generator, he's really slow. That that even if he responds to something, it he make for him it's really important, you know, just to be slow. It may take time to digest. And considering that his authority is solar that means that uh, he is emotionally defined and he needs more time to make any decision decisions in his life so like one responding does not mean that he has to do that so he needs more time and this is like uh considering that even considering that we are the same type yes we are both generated but i'm manifesting generator and he's um pure generator and we have this uh, drama here that um he considered me a crazy mom like oh let's go let's go fast fast quickly quickly we have to do that you know just like very very fast and i consider him really very slow so what i'm trying to do i'm trying to push him yes and um in terms of authorities we're different too so we're different too and um 
I am sacral fast and his solar plexus very slow. So he needs more time. So, and it was really challenging for both of, of, of us to accept it. But again, because he, he um, this is me who is experimenting with human design. So, and um, uh, I was trying to, again, to fully realized what does it mean to be a sacral being and what does it mean for him to be completely different in terms that he has another inner authority that he's actually has his inner authority and i can't push him to make any decision fast and so quickly to jump uh to any experiment so i've just i i've just have to realize here that we are different we are really different i found myself pushing him to do something like a million times a million times and it's still there it's not so often as it was from the beginning yes it happens sometimes but again i'm i'm trying to be very aware of um of what is going on in our relationship because when you do like this um like um i'm still sacral uh be like i i i'm i still have my inner authority sacral inner authority and it means for me to be fast um but in our relationship because when you do like a relationship yes chart um you have your like mutual decision making process and in our case, a mutual decision-making pro um, process is based on his inner authority. So I have to accept that I have to be slow with him. I have to, all decisions that are, um, that I'm trying to make with him and for him, they should be considered slowly. They should be, they should be, uh they should be made slowly yes like considering his slow nature so and um it's challenging it's challenging and difficult you know just to uh because all the time you have to be you know just you have to be aware of what is going on you can't sleep here because if you want to sleep you know just to uh uh, you know, when you drive your car, sometimes you can be really present at this moment and you can see the whole picture, everything around you. You can smell, you can hear, you can see, so everything. But when you sleep, you just, you're just driving like uh, on autopilot, like, oh, 10 minutes later, like, oh, I'm already here. I just, I have not noticed that because you were in your mind just trying to, I don't know, just to plan anything for future or for example to trying to think about the situation that happened in your past so what i'm trying to do i'm trying to be present every day every day with myself every day with my son i'm trying to experiment with uh, strategy and authority and to stay on the surface